Hi, Martha Moody again. We're on week two, part two, page five of your lecture notes. We're going to talk about adding or subtracting those like terms that we just talked about in the last uh, video. So the textbook would talk about collecting like terms using the distributive property. So down here where it says same as, remember on the first week we had the distributive property that was defined as A times the quantity of B plus C was A times B plus A times C. So in the textbook, they use this by taking the A and putting it on the right side of the grouping of B plus C, which we can do because the community property of multiplication, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. And then we do the same thing with the AB, making it BA, and the CA. So you can see how these um, identify with the different variables right here. So they would go ahead and collect the 3 and the 5 together using the distributive property, add those together, and get a y to the second. So you can use the community property or think about that in your head if you like to. What I like to do is actually go ahead and write them down. And it's not stated in the textbook, but we add like terms together by adding together the numerical coefficients. So example one, 8x plus 2x, the textbook would distribute the 8 plus 2, getting a 10x. So what I like to do is actually write down the 8x plus the 2x. I can cover up the 8 and 2, and I can see that those x's are identical. So I know I can add them together. So it's like 8 apples plus 2 apples gives me 10 apples. The x's stay the same all the way down. That's because they're being added together. So if we were going to multiply 8x times 2x, we would multiply the 8 times 2 for a 16, and we would add the exponents of those x's to get 16x squared for our answer. But when we're adding, they're like apples, so we don't get apples squared back. We just get apples. In this case, we just get x's. Example number three, or two, is 3x plus 7x. The textbook would distribute the 3 and the 7 and get a 10x. What I do is usually just write them down, 3x plus 7x, I add 3 and 7 together, the x's remain the same, and our answer would be 10x. The third example is the one where on this third term we had the variables of z to the third, y to the second, turned around, so we just went ahead and turned those down turn those around, and you can see where I've written them down here, that if you cover up the 2, the minus 7, and the minus 5, you couldn't tell the difference between any of those three terms. That makes them like terms. We don't break up the x, the y squared, or the z to the third power. They're a group. They stay together. And then we go ahead and combine their coefficients. 2 minus 7 is minus 5. Minus 5 plus minus 5 is minus 10. So the answer is going to be minus 10 x y squared z to the third power. Example number 4 is one where we use subtraction. Again, using the distributive property, you could take the 3 minus 2 and get a 1 for a 1x squared or just an x squared. Same thing if we write them down. We have 3 minus 2 gives us 1, so our answer is 1x squared or just x squared. I have no preference on how you write your answers. They're both identical and the same answer. Going on to page 7, what I'd like you to do is try these four problems that are right here. And um, I would go ahead and line them up with terms that match each other, then draw your line and add them up. If you need a little bit of help, go on and look at the answers on the next page to see how I've done it. Um, and you can check your answers before you go on. When you pick back up on this video, then I'll go through these um, problems and explain them if you need any more help. So on page number 8 of combining like terms, I usually just start out with the very first term and write each one down. So I write down 12x, then I come to the 3x. It's like the 12x, so I write it down. I would probably write it down as plus 3x instead of how I've done it here. Um, and then I go to the plus y, which is plus 1y. It doesn't match the x's. I write it off to the right. I go to the 5y. It matches the 1y, so I write it underneath of it. Then I combine the coefficients. 12 plus 3 is 15. 1 plus 5 is 6, so my answer is 15x plus 6y. Problem number 2, I start off on the left. 14x 
goes over here, then the minus 8y doesn't match the 14x, so I write it off to the left. Minus 19x matches the 14x, so I write it underneath of it. Minus 5y matches the minus 8y, so I write it underneath. Then I've written all my terms down, I draw my line and combine them. 14 minus 19 is minus 5, and minus 8 minus 5 is minus 13. Going on to the third example, I write down the 5x. The minus y doesn't match it. I write it off to the right. The minus x is a minus 1x. It matches the first term. I write it underneath of it. The plus c doesn't match anybody. I write it off to the right by itself. The plus 3 doesn't match anything. I write it off to the right by itself. The plus 1 is a number. I write it under the 3. I draw my line and combine my like terms. 5 minus 1 is 4x. I bring down the minus y. Doesn't match anything. I bring down the plus c. Doesn't match anything. And then I take the plus 3 plus 1. Gives me a 4. My next example is the minus 2x squared y squared. I write it down. The plus 8x doesn't match it, I write it off to the right. My third term is a minus 5, it matches the first term, so I write it underneath of that. The minus 2x matches the 8x term, I write it underneath of there. I have another minus 2x term, I write, line it up underneath of there. The minus 15 is a number, doesn't match anything we've had so far, I write it off to the right. The plus 5 matches the minus 15, I write it underneath. And then finally, the last term matches the ones over here on the far left. I would again probably write it as a minus 1x squared y squared. I draw my line and combine like terms. So minus 2 minus 5 is minus 7. Minus 7 minus 1 is minus 8x squared y squared. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is a positive 4x. I write it down as a positive 4x. Minus 15 plus 5 gives me minus 10. So my answer then is minus 8x squared y squared plus 4x minus 10. We're going to now talk about addition and subtraction of polynomials. So what we're talking about now is groups of things with parentheses around them. The ones that we just did were just all terms that we were combining with no parentheses. You'll find the page number to refer to in the box in your lecture notes. So on the first example, if we were adding groups of polynomials, meaning with a plus sign in between them, we just drop the parentheses around the groups and combine like terms. So our example one is we have three terms in the first group, we have three terms in the second group. We just drop the parentheses when there, there is a plus sign between the groups and add them. The reason that we can do that is that if we display a number in front of each group, that number would be a 1. So if we multiply the balance in our checkbook by a 1, it doesn't change it. So in this group, um, in this example, if we multiply 1 by that first group, we just get back exactly what that first group was. And if we multiply 1 by the second group in the parentheses, the 1 times the 12x to the third power just gives us 12x to the third. 1 times minus 7x squared just gives us minus 7x squared. And 1 times 3 just gives us 3. So when we combine our examples, then we have minus 5 plus 12 is 7x to the third. 3 minus 7 is minus 4x squared. We drop down the minus x and we drop down the 3. So adding them essentially with the plus sign between the groups, just drop the parentheses around the groups and combine them. If we're subtracting groups of polynomials though, we add the opposite of the polynomial group being subtracted, which is the one in yellow here, to the first group, which is the one in the kind of turquoise. So in class number one, we find subtraction as subtract b from a is taking the opposite of b and adding it to a. So a minus b became a plus negative b. 5 minus 7 became the opposite of 7 is a negative 7, and we added that to the 5. So taking the opposite of this group that we have right here, the opposite of the 5x squared y third is minus 4xy. Um, is I'm sorry, the opposite of 5x squared y to the third minus 4xy is minus 5x squared y to the third plus 4xy. So that makes this group become these two plus then, and then we drop the parentheses around them and combine them. 
So I prefer to think of it as putting a minus 1 in front of it and multiplying it out and then going ahead and combining the groups.